The monsoon always brings about a feeling of nostalgia, the urge to go out on long drives and the imperative to go green. A woman extraordinaire today has always been one step ahead of the curve when it comes to eco-consciousness. Meet Anjali Bansal. Anjali started her career as an engineer and worked with ISRO, but very quickly she was a headliner in the corporate world. In 2018, Anjali set up Avana Capital, a climate and sustainability focused venture capital firm that invests in technology and innovation led startups that infuse climate action and sustainability into their projects. Anjali, really happy to have you with us today and I was reading up on you. before i came here and your bio reads like the range of this car 423 kilometers long like a whole list of achievements and really really impressive is there any feather in your cap that you feel like you haven't got yet that you want renuka first of all so delighted to be here with you in this lovely car uh driving out on a saturday morning yes um <clears throat> well i've done a lot of different things I've enjoyed everything, every one of them, and I wouldn't say feather in cap. I like to think about it as have I contributed, have I created some impact, and what I'm currently doing, I would like to see it get to being the most impactful climate investing platform, uh, by just in India, but globally be recognized. And we've already got some recognition here on the global climate tech VC list, where we become the go-to for founders, innovators who want to solve for climate action and sustainability. So, you know, that's why we brought the green car for you today, the Mercedes EQB. So, we're all clean green <laughs> and in keeping with your theme. This car has a really cool navigation system which kind of uh plots the journey based on uh, how much range you have, the terrain, where the chargers are so that you're never like really short of, you know, people have range anxiety, right. but this won't let you have range anxiety. Right. So, on your journey did you kind of map this journey and decide that you know hey i want to i i you started at like with isro engineering then you went to private equity and now you have your own fund so did you kind of map that journey in your mind or was it things that happened along the way a little bit of both there is a bit of a map in terms of skill sets so a good education was a great place to start much like i'm sure the the this car starts from a very good place and then to some extent i guess the the fun of the journey is discovery yeah so knowing that uh, once you have your goal posts and the goal posts for me have always been uh, around both my own learning yeah and contribution back contribution to people making a difference and doing something that is larger than myself correct not just for me but really for the world and for community at large and then earlier i started with science and technology i've always been a bit of a science geek i think it's gotten worse over the years so i'm more nerdy <laughs> than before um and i grew up i was a star wars star trek generation oh lovely right? yeah. so so fascinated with space wanted to go work at yeah. nasa who knows go to the moon so i worked at isro and realized very quickly that my path is probably not in the lab but in a different way and hence ended up doing business working with mckinsey i went to columbia got a scholarship um joined mckinsey did a lot of work with and i think that was just a wonderful experience the spectrum of work that you're able to do and the firm's values around creating impact with clients okay. i think that really became the foundation okay and then moving back to india um many years ago having children raising children itself is an adventure correct uh, and then continuing the learning journey you mentioned private equity happened i was also chairman of a very stressed public sector bank called dena bank correct where uh, you you were part of that whole with with the merger happened that's right so had to work um, closely with both government stakeholder regulator and other stakeholders of course to put the first big bank consolidation in india across uh, bank of baroda which is a bank in dena So I would say many of these things were serendipitous. Yeah. And I'm in that sense I think venture investing is like that. Yeah. You're looking for the next new curve for learning, for innovation, for impact and want to make the best of it. Yeah. Like you said, you know, life is a journey. It's it's an adventure. New things keep happening all the time. I mean, we in the auto industry are 
learning about EVs, the, the right. new technology, you know, um, sustainability is the name of the game even here right. in the automotive industry. Uh, everybody's finding ways to, you know, go carbon neutral. Uh, and, you know, as automotive enthusiasts, we were like, EVs were be so boring. <laughs> but I think there's things I like about it, like, this. Whoa! <laughs> and EV is so not boring. <laughs> yeah, so not boring. You know, that instant power, that talk right. that you get from an EV. Right. I think, yeah, lots of things that bring up smile on your face. So yeah. I never dismiss anything. Right. You know, like power, it's, it's an enjoyable thing. You've been at the head of companies. You were like right at the top of the game, enjoying that power. And then you have to come back and start something ground up yourself again. So what was that feeling like? And you know, how was the change, the transition, and how did it feel? You know, you asked me about the map and the journey. Yeah. So, I would say I took the road less traveled. Okay. So I think learning or starting something new is uh, incredibly humbling. Yeah. You can be wherever you are, you can be whoever you are in that particular circuit and circle. Yeah. But doing something new is, um, it is one of the most exhilarating, rewarding, fun things to do like the torque you just gave to the yes, car yeah. at the same time you know it's new so yeah. there are new skills to be learnt new people and new reputation you have to build your own kind of credibility all over again to some extent right. but everything you've done in the past is with you yeah so that actually that cumulative insight learning experience networks relationships all play a role yeah. so it isn't quite starting from scratch all over again I think the biggest thing is learning the and the joy really of working with very young people, yeah. uh, founders, young members of our team, with whom I think every day is a learning. So knowing that we are in a knowledge industry. Correct. So capital is a input factor, but yeah. really we are in the knowledge industry. Knowledge industry, when you want to create large size, outsized returns, financial returns, impact returns, it is actually all about the team. So the two things that we have working for us is people and capital. And capital is a little bit more under your control, people is not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In these businesses, we are a fiduciary, we manage our money and other people's money. Uh, we have to trust completely Correct. each other. Even, you know, when you talk about trust, I, I get you, you have to have complete faith in the machine that's driving you, like right. your machine is your your, your right. people, you know, this is this is my machine right. and this is what drives me. I mean, of course, today, uh, in today's day and age, we have lovely things like that blind spot monitor that, that keep me completely safe, right. seven airbags, blah, blah, blah. Right. So there's a lot of safety right. in these cars. Are you a safe investment maker or a risk taker? I think I'm a risk taker when it comes to the journey. Okay. So to take turns that and say let's go down this road yeah but as an investor i'm a safer investor okay of course we do early stage investments right so we are a venture investor mm -hmm. which by definition yeah. means we take risk, risk. risk on, we yeah. take risk we go around corners where you yeah. can't really see yeah sometimes and where the map may not exist yeah so for example if you are investing or looking at carbon markets we don't quite know how exactly it will unfold yeah. but we know it will unfold yeah there will be a path yeah. and in some cases, we will be part of making that path. Okay. So, but it's great to have a safe vehicle. Yeah. And the safety we create, and hence I say we are a safe investor, is we over-index. Yeah. Like we over-index on vision and values, we over-index on building strong processes, okay. very strong governance okay. and compliance processes, both inside the firm, okay. as well as uh, in the companies that we invest in. So we work closely with our founders to build robust systems inside the companies. You do need all of that to build something robust as we've seen from these cars that we drive today. I mean, German engineering, everybody talks about it and the fact that I think it's just their processes, like you say, the quality control, right. you know, they're just setting everything in shape that, that gives you then a final product that, you know, is everybody raves about yeah. and you know i've always loved the way german cars and the mercedes actually sits on the road yeah you feel a sense of solidity absolutely that the road may be bumpy you may take a off turn yeah but the car will be solid and you can rely on it absolutely and so delighted to see that there is now an ev yes absolutely not one they have many now they, and actually they're one of the first few to actually start building evs 
uh, assembling them in India. So I think that's really been good as well. Weather, I think today is playing games with us and it's been crazy weather and I think all over the world we're seeing crazy things happening with the weather. Uh, so sustainability, climate action, it's all a very big part of all of us thinking now. I think it's gotten a lot more people to think about it. But what made you decide to have that as your focus uh, at Avana? Great question, Renuka. It's a, it's a combination of, um, I would say, the left brain, right brain. Okay. The left brain is, you know, I'm a, probably by intrinsics as well as by trading, I'm a problem solver. Okay. So what gives me a high is looking at something and saying, okay, here is a problem and we can solve it and turn that into an opportunity. So as we started looking at, hey, what's the biggest problem facing the world today? And it's just so sort of in your face clear that both rationally, intellectually, it's climate and sustainability. You can see weather change around you all the time. Right. And it has significant impact both on life and livelihood. Yeah. So you see floods, you see you know, unseasonal heat, uh, temperatures, and people actually getting very bad health because of poor air quality, uh, poor bad water, and at the same time, livelihood. So you see interruption of supply chains and businesses, um, crop patterns are getting disturbed, we are seeing shortages of food, yeah. and then of course global geopolitics and so on as well, right? But ultimately coming down to this is the next defining problem of our generation. Yeah. We should have started 20 years ago, but at least thankfully now there is a sense of urgency, not just in India, but globally. And so this was the opportunity set. So the other side of the problem coin is always the opportunity. Yeah. So big, big, I think what digital was for the last 30 years, yeah. sustainability will be for the next 30, much like our life and work has got digitalized. Yeah. I think we have to sustainabilize. Well, and I think also more, more and more countries have realized that sustainability also means self-sustainability. Right. You can't be sourcing everything from outside and then, you know, uh, so I think that's also changing. Brilliantly said. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we look at very closely is miles travel. Yeah. How much are we moving? And, and it's actually quite ironic, you know, as yeah. having been in business now 30 years, yeah. we spent the last 30 years trying to figure out globally distributed supply chains. Yeah. Yeah. Where can you manufacture cheapest, yeah. grow vegetables cheapest yeah. and then move them? Yeah. And we only calculated the cost of transportation, we never calculated the cost of the earth or the carbon cost. So now we are going back to saying sourcing more sustainably, more locally. So we look at climate in all three lenses, so very holistically. So we look at mitigation, which is largely carbon, GHG emission focused. Um, both reducing as well as putting carbon back. Mm. Um, but there's also, in addition to mitigation, we look at adaptation. Mm. So that's transition from a low, high carbon to low carbon pathway and resilience. Mm. So resilience is really um, preparing communities and protecting the most vulnerable. Mm. And consequently, we, and anything you want to get done, you have to do at scale. So that means it has to be affordable. Okay. So inclusion for us is a given. Any pathway <coughs> for sustainable growth and progress has to be inclusive. Okay. So it has to be green mm -hmm. and it has to be inclusive. What's been the most rewarding moment of your journey? It could be an incident, a company that you invested in, a moment, anything. There's a very little that compares with being a parent, yeah. I must say. Yeah. so. The personal journey and you know we spoke about team and I think the home team is very very important as well. Correct. So having the right pilot co-pilot if you will and yes. mutually so you know my better half my husband who's really and both of us have been sort of co-pilots for each other in life. So one of the most exhilarating moments is when you are a parent and you see the milestones in your next generation. Yeah. Professionally um, I think there have been many. One is blessed and fortunate um, and the sense of satisfaction when we resolve Dena Bank, yeah. <laughs> which is so difficult with so many depositors, it's such a difficult situation for all of them. Yeah. So getting that resolved, landing all our employees well um, and then I used to be on the board of Delivery which is India's largest logistics yeah. company and seeing the journey from young company to listing was very, was a proud moment. Yeah. 
and now in our portfolio as i see our company's growth you know farmart has grown yeah. in the last 2 years they are now touching the lives of 3 million farmers um very very frugal very technology product led highly inclusive mm -hmm. so they're working with 2 and a half lakh rural retailers 3 million farmers and they are not burning money so that's, that's also, and they are very yeah. and they're operationally break even so when you see founders like this and the opportunity to partner with them yeah um i think that is also a privilege absolutely i have won many awards so i won't say that those were not good moments these were all wonderful moments yeah. all of those awards are wonderful moments uh, but i think what gives joy is when you see outcomes correct of this like you said your travel is completely completely crazy and i i get how you feel because there are bags packed and one is coming and one is going right. and it's just like one circle Absolutely. you you know like you get out of one bag into the other bag and you're on the go again because my life is pretty much like that does, as well right? yeah. yeah but uh, it kind of is, has taught me to be a little bit more organized in my life so do you feel like uh, there are learnings from you know having this crazy hectic power filled life what are the learnings that you've derived from and things that drive you every day like for me i know that you know i've learned to be really really organized i've learned to plan ahead and always have a plan b you know so what are the things that you do so i live by my calendar okay um but if i were to break it up i would say being very organized with your time um being somewhat um consciously uh, focused on prioritizing what is important what is important and what is urgent so there are things that are urgent but that should not take over from important so i take a uh, if i may i'll use a metaphor here which is uh, i take a rock boulder pebble sand approach to life okay. so you define what are your big rocks right because our capacity time energy is yeah. finite correct you can stretch it yeah but it's still finite yeah um, and so you have to define what are your big rocks so the rocks go in first then you have to define what are your uh, pebbles then the pebbles go in next actually you start with boulders boulders so then, yeah, yeah. You start with boulders you, your your boulders are in your family your work your immediate the responsibilities then your rocks go in then pebbles and then sand so yeah. important to not fill up your time with sand so i'm a fairly good prioritizer interesting of yeah, what is important interesting theory i shall remember yeah. this <laughs> now yeah. i've shared this with my children as well as they think about and and often with my founders that what do you spend time on actually defines to a large extent the outcomes you are able to get uh the last question uh basically how does anjali bansal relax how does anjali bansal take i mean for me driving something like this in an ev where it's nice and silent complete refinement you don't hear anything gives me time to think regroup how do you do that i would say three things my best times are spent actually with my family on long road trips oh lovely so you enjoy the road so we enjoy the road a lot um i love to drive as well uh with a nice car like this on a nice road and and scenic surroundings but more importantly actually our road trips have been great journeys and adventures of discovery of each other okay. so the conversations you have with each other in the car so that's a big and and i love to travel with my family yeah um in fact i'd rather go to some place yeah. with the kids than without the kids and yeah. of course they are now all young grown up people yeah. so they're not quite kids but the other thing is hanging out with my husband with my friends other family as well and i uh, i mentioned i did mention i'm a science geek Correct. So that's the other thing. I'm massively into science fiction. Oh, lovely! So science and fantasy. So there is uh, all the uh, should I name names? Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can. You can. So whether it is uh, Star Wars or Star Trek, and um, or of course now it is uh, Lord of the Rings, and yeah. more, more recently The Witcher. So I guess that's what I do for fun: travel, read, watch, and uh, I like music as well. Yeah. But music is an accompaniment. Yes, Not and on English. road trips, it's always great to have some nice music. Yeah. Well, it's been fantastic chatting with you, and we're just going to head up to your yes. home now. Indeed. Thank you so much. It's been great to talk, to drive together, 
in this lovely car.